Hey guys, welcome to today's Facebook Live. I am coming to you guys on a Wednesday. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing a, an important topic today, which is making yourself essential. Um, are you acting like an essential business right now? Have you been marketing yourself like you're a nice to have? A nice to have business versus an essential business. That is what we're talking about today. I'm going to be putting those kind of keywords up on the screen as we go. So because it's um, kind of the spring break, I'm just going to do a Wednesday. Um, I said I'd jump in around noon, so I feel like I'm still in the ballpark. I hope you're having a good one. Um, yeah, I got, I've been thinking of this um, important question because a lot of um, conversations I've been having lately. First off, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have been really um, asking great questions, reaching out, booking calls. I am so excited to be working with people that are in the group right now. Um, I just have to thank you for you taking on the, the, the challenge of kind of wrestling with a few things I've been saying over the last few months and really putting yourself in a position where you want to kick ass at this. You're not going to do this the crappy way. You're not going to do this the old way. So I commend you. I commend you. And I thank you. So I wanted to say that first and foremost. Um, and if we haven't had a chance to speak yet, you will definitely get a chance um, to to check in with me um, and have a chat, uh, one of those chats with me and, and see what's going on in your business. But so here's the thing. You may be thinking that you have a must have business and and, and um, what that sounds like is you're, you're reading a lot of things, you're listening to a lot of things, and you're either shaking your head, you're like, yeah, no, that's not, not me, or you're nodding your head, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. Like, you're thinking that you are, um, or you're putting yourself in the position of this really important, um, essential service or business that you offer, or maybe it's especially the product that you cater to a specific audience and you really know the value internally of, of what you do and the skills you bring to the table. So intrinsically, you you know there's value there, right? This can go two ways. So I'm speaking to the group that, you know, you, you know there's value or you may think you have a must-have service. Where the gap usually lies is after just a few questions, we uncover that you are actually not marketing yourself that way, Okay. Because there's two important things going on. There's you and what you think you're bringing to the table and your skill set, the results that you know you've gotten, um, the, uh, the impact you know your product can make. So there's all this amazing stuff floating around in your world. Then there's a gap that it's not translating into what your clients are seeing from you, thinking about you, hearing from you regularly, or hearing from you enough about a certain topic. So like your secret sauce, for example. Because if you're changing your secret sauce day to day to day, they can't follow a bouncing ball about what you're gonna talk about next. So there may be a gap between how great, and, and, I, you know, and I believe that's true, all you have to offer. But meanwhile, your clients are over here in this little storm of their life, and they only need to hear and see a few very strategic things. When you're in that space of there's a problem that you can't solve yourself, you 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 aren't in the headspace to take it all in. Okay, when you are in, an, in a position where you are so stuck and things are affecting you so badly. Maybe these are companies, maybe these are clients, the people you think you're targeting. When you're in that space, you can only relate to a few core things at a time. You're not going to be able to take in all the stars and stripes and, you know, all the things going on your head in one minute. So two things happen. One, you're either not sure of what you're communicating as value. So you just keep picking different things and plopping them into your marketing and you're it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's wrong. It's just not hitting the mark, guys. It's just not hitting the mark. So, so you need to be in a space. You need to get your your um, your positioning and your language in a space that the people that you're trying to reach are actually in the headspace 
of hearing what you have to say. That may mean let's reevaluate all the great stuff you've got going on and just pick the first few things. So that's pretty obvious. That's not anything really new that I'm teaching here, right? But what is new is if you actually are, if you actually um, want to stand out in a vastly crowded marketplace, is that some, some of you are thinking that you don't have competition, that what you do is different. And I will tell you, that's likely true, but you only have a limited amount of boxes you can put yourself in today. And you have to stand out in that box. So here's the thing. If you want to, sorry, I gotta, that's the problem with props, <laughs> is that you drop them. Um, so if you're really wanting to reach these people, not only do you have to understand what you're great at, you have to understand how to reach your customers where they're at. Now, this is what getting me back to a must have or a nice to have service. You know, it's, it's nice to, you know, I could, I could take any business example and say, well, that's, that could be a nice to have. I could describe it to you in a nice to have way, or I could describe it to you in a must have way that is essential for the outcome that the client wants. Now, these are things like, these are the things that your skills and knowledge are essential to your clients. It could either be for their success, it could be for their survival, you know, getting to the next stage of their life or their or their business. It could be in terms of their freedom, freedom in life, freedom from relationship, freedom from burden, freedom from guilt, freedom from a past, freedom from um, depression, whatever. And it could be also essential to them in terms of their family. So whatever area, it applies to any area that you're doing this with. And I'm, I'm saying that if you, there's two things that could be happening. Number one, um, you may think you have a must have and that your work is important. But number one, do your clients view what you do that way? Do they think of it in terms of it being essential? And if they don't, you're gonna have to relate to them in a little bit different way to constantly Remind them that it's essential. Number two, maybe you're not even sure yourself because you've now by now taken hopefully a good look at some of the th the content you're putting out there, the platform that you have been building for yourself over these last months, maybe over this last year, or maybe you've been trying to build this platform for more than a year or two or five and nothing is sticking. Well, I wonder if a huge part of the problem is you're not even sure yourself if you're essential. You've never really truly believed it. Like, if you really, truly, do you really, truly believe that they can survive without you? That what I do is not that important. It sucks to come up against that, guys. And it's terrible, you know, it's good to be aware of that. There's nothing wrong with that. And when you, if you find yourself in that position of not being really sure if I'm essential, like really would the world collapse one day if I didn't come on Facebook and all this, like really, you could really be that person and go through that dialogue and be like, does the world really need another blank? Be very careful because no, they probably don't need another blank, but what they need, what they could need is you. And what they could need is someone with your exact skill set that has the access to solve that exact problem and that exact solution they need that you can provide because of A, B, C, and E, F, G. Um, now, that does, it's a process that takes time to figure out, but it's figure outable, right? You've read that book, everything is figure outable. It is figure outable. There's a process by which to figure that out, but by the end, you should emphatically believe that what you have to give to people is that gift. It is that solution. And no longer are you peddling to everybody like, hey, who just needs another coach? Who just needs another this? Who just needs to be more organized? Who just needs to be more, um, you know, a better creative thinker and then it'll help your business. Instead of being so general and thinking that you appeal to the masses, you actually begin to understand on a very granular, granular level that the issues that you solve then you start to feel more essential. Then you start to understand what people are lacking. And what happens when you come through a, a thought leadership process is you start to see gaps 
So you're listening with different ears and you're reading with different eyes. I always say this around week four or five of working with people. You actually start to look with different eyes and listen with different ears because you're tuned into something different where you can now step in and, and fill the gap. Step in and fill the gap. So the gap I was telling you earlier where there's client on one end, I'm going to erase that, and you on the other, and some, you know the things aren't reaching, you start to notice the, go the gaps and the holes that other people are missing. And you just speak to those. And sure enough, those are the few things that get them out of their stormy cloud, right? Those happen to be the few things where they start to see light. They start to see hope. They start to pay attention because you've just specialized in them. You've reached them where other people aren't. So there is a bit of language here. There is a bit of learning and process to do this, but it's possible. So um, the, the last point I want to make, guys, is if you haven't figured out if you're essential, if you haven't figured out if what you do is so important that you're to the point where you're just willing to give up or willing to look elsewhere, take other jobs, take clients you don't want to work with, I would say stop. Because you actually really should stop and take a big look. I don't want you to go further with your the business or the consulting because if you're just going to dabble, if you're just going to play it safe and you're still not sure where you'd like to focus on exactly what problem you should solve, you need to. You need to solve the problem immediately because you you don't want to put yourself out there until those two things are clear. You don't want to put out content until those things are clear. Um, I've mentioned this before, how it kind of exacerbates the problems people are having by not getting clear information and being, you know, too many generalist experts out there or calling themselves that um, rather than the expert that solves problem X. So we will dive in on this a little more, but time after time, I have seen this again. You will no longer be selling people like people don't want to be sold or convinced they need you and by not knowing your essential you're just kind of like repeating 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 until they something clicks and magically happens that they come to you but what you need to do is understand where it's stopping them in their life where it's stopping them in their relationship and where it's stopping them in their business so getting more essential on the problem you solve is really going to clarify this piece so i wanted to come on today um because we want people to invest in you they invest in experts. This is all about pricing as well, guys. This is all about pricing what you charge, the value you offer, the outcomes you the outcomes you deliver, um, keeping your promises, leading with integrity. That is thought leadership. All those things are thought leadership. And all of those things can be built into a company model and a company structure. Um, when you run this as a true you know, consultancy when you're actually solving people's problems. So last, I'm going to leave you with some clues that um, you are still operating this way. Number one, your content is not generating um, where you want it. So I don't know where you are in your channels. I know I have a few things going on myself, but um, where or, or the types of replies coming back to you, either from your email string or your DMs or your LinkedIn or wherever you are, um, they all seem to be either very general or no replies at all. Number two, you're subject to cancellations. That's a really good indicator that they know they don't need you now. They can maybe probably get the same type of info later from you. Um, you know, worse off, they can go find it online somewhere. Okay, you don't want to be compared with, oh, if, you, if I can't solve your problem, just go look it up online to solve your problem. Um, three, you are shifting prices. If you keep changing your prices, you're probably not landed on being essential. And the last one is you're chasing leads, not attracting them. So that you're looking at your, your marketing and your outreach, and there's nothing that's actually attracting eyes your way. It's always a chase. So if the business is still feeling like a chase, you really need to lock into how can I market myself as an expert, as an essential service that no one else in my space is really providing right now, the issues people aren't really talking about right now. So um, in these times, there are a lot of shifting perspectives. So we have a lot of work to work with. I find when clients that I work with come in, we have a lot of areas we can explore in this and we have fun tailoring it exactly to what the business owner wants to help solve. So there's choices here. You do have options. 
you don't have to lock yourself in one box. <laughs> so don't get scared about niching down. I always say that as well. Um, I would love to have a, a deeper discussion on this. This has just been a really quick intro. And I love watching my people run their business this way. It's so much more freeing and so much less time consuming when they know exactly what they need to be talking about that day, who they need to be going out to to make a difference instead of chasing and not getting anywhere. So I will leave my um, uh, book call link, as I always do. You know where to find me um, to make that call. See if this is the right time for you to take action with this. But I, I truly, truly encourage you at times like this, your business needs to be essential. There's no other option. So let's set it up that way. I will leave the book a call link. It's a free call with me. We get to explore together. We get to um, talk about what's going on in the last few months of the business, in the last few years of your business. Um, or if, you, even if you're just setting this up, you want to start off in the space of thought leadership, in the space of coming across as an expert. Because in this consulting space, there's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I'll leave you here and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, whatever you're doing, whether you're on light work week or you're taking the spring break or you're just head down in your business. I love hearing from you. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to talk to you guys again real soon. Take care.